All right, in today's lesson, we're looking at vertex form and roots. The objective will be to understand what vertex form of a quadratic looks like and to use vertex form to solve for the roots of the quadratic. The vocabulary needed for this is vertex form, which is a quadratic equation in the form y equals a times the difference of x and h squared plus k. And roots, roots are when f of x equals zero, otherwise known as another name for x-intercepts. We'll start with the basic understanding of vertex form. In vertex form, we have equations in this manner. And this is what the letters represent. X and Y obviously are our typical X and Y. The vertex is actually represented by this H and K. One thing that we need to note with the vertex is if you see a minus sign in front of the H, that actually means that the H value is positive. If you see a plus sign in front of the H, that actually means that the H value is negative. The H represents the X value of the vertex. The K works just the opposite. The K represents the Y value of the vertex, but when it's positive, it's actually a positive value. When it's a negative in front of it, that's a negative K. The A value tells us a few things. The main one for us right now is that a positive A value is telling us that the graph is going up, that it opens up. A negative A value tells us that the graph is going to open down. The next part is, what is a root? And this is just another name for x-intercepts. We've been calling them x-intercepts up until now. And they look in this form, x comma zero, meaning the y value is zero. And that's how we're going to actually find these things. We're going to take zero and put it in for y in the equation and then solve. Our first example looks like this. y equals 2 times the difference of x and 3 squared minus 8. So what we're going to do is, since we want to find roots, Roots are always x comma 0, so we're going to take 0 and put it in for y. That will give us a problem that looks like this. From this problem, we can now solve to find the x values. Add 8 on both sides. Divide by 2 on both sides. At this point, we've gotten rid of all the math except for the square and the minus 3. All the math on the outside. So now we want a square root. And when we square root, if we are square rooting a positive number, that's going to give us two possible answers, a positive and a negative. If we're square rooting 0, we're only going to get one possible answer. And if we're square rooting the negative, we know that's no solution. Since this 4 is positive, we're going to get two possible answers. Square root of 4 is 2 equals x minus 3. Or square root of 4 can also be negative 2 equals x minus 3. From here, we're going to add 3 on both sides. and x is 5, or x is 1, which gives us two possible roots. These roots are 5 comma 0, x just gets replaced by 5, or 1 comma 0, so two possible roots there. Our second example 
looks like this. In this one, I have f of x. That's no different than a y. In this respect, we've got x comma 0 is our root. So 0 goes in for f of x, giving us 0 equals negative 3 times x plus 5 squared plus 9. To solve this problem, we're going to subtract 9 on both sides. We're then going to divide by negative 3. Now we're down to just squaring and the adding 5, which means we have to square root. Again, we follow the same process. Positive gives us two possibilities, negative gives us no solution, and 0 gives us one possibility. So we square root both sides. And if we get our calculators out, we find out that the square root of 3 is really irrational, meaning we can either go ahead and round our answers, which would look like we're using 1.73 to do all our math, or we can find exacts. I'm going to find exacts. I'm going to minus 5 on both sides, and we get x equals the square root of 3 minus 5. If we do it on this side, we get x equals the negative square root of 3 minus 5. This would give us roots of square root of 3 minus 5 comma 0, or the negative square root of 3, minus 5, comma 0. If we used 1.73 instead, we would get the answers that are rounded, by the way. So they're not exact. These are exact. We would get the answers negative 3.27, comma 0, and negative 6.73, comma 0. So these would be our examples of roots in an irrational situation. Thank you, and if you didn't understand something or need to see something again, please pause the video, rewind, and watch again. Thank you.